sometimes we'll run her in a, in a way that she's purely learning and she's imitating people or she's learning from data. And when she does that, it's really hard to know what she's gonna do next. Somehow she seems more alive that way. I feel like I've just walked into an episode of Westworld. Japan is in crisis. Not enough humans are having babies. And while the country's working to stem the population collapse, it's doing so in its own uniquely Japanese way. I come to Japan all the time and it's always a bit of a treat. This place is like, it's like a bit of a wonderland, you know, things that don't make sense anywhere else in the world, things that aren't possible anywhere else in the world are possible here. This place tends to go its own way and somehow it works. To see how Japan's transformation is taking shape, I'm headed to the University of Osaka, the birthplace of some of today's most advanced robots. Wow. I can see her breathing, her shoulders sort of going in and out. Do you ever find yourself working in here and you freak out because you turn away, you look away? Never. You, you don't get startled? No, I won't. The goal here is to make the robots as realistic as possible to test how humans react and respond to humanoids. She <laughs> feels very realistic. Is my response typical? No. It's Actually, not. people won't touch it. People will ask for permission before to touch her. <laughs> my parents didn't teach me any manners yeah. is the problem, that's all. Hi. Hi, Hi nice Adam Yamaguchi, nice to see you. Nice to see you. These robots are the creation of Dr. Hiroshi Ishiguro, known as the godfather of humanoids. Oh my god, how many robots do you have in here? And one of his most famous creations is himself in humanoid form. The, the people they think, uh, you know, the, my motivation is, is to build a robot, but it is not true. So my motivation is to understand what human is by developing a human-like robot. In 50 years, the Japanese population is going to be a half half of our current population. Uh, but still, of course, you know, that we want to keep the same level of uh, quality of life. So the, how we can do that? answer is to develop a robot that can support our daily life. There can be a new kind of humans, right? <laughs> they weren't kidding. They actually did get rid of all the humans. This is Henna Hotel, which literally means weird hotel. Welcome to Henna Hotel. It's a hotel that's run mostly by robots for everything from landscaping to carrying luggage, even cooking and making drinks. During most of my stay, I didn't see a single person working here because everything is automated. Most hotels of this size would require staffs of about 30 to 40 people. This place gets by with less than seven, which is pretty amazing. This would be unheard of in the U.S. where people are clamoring from jobs and saving jobs from automation. Here in Japan, they kind of have the opposite problem. There are not enough people for all the jobs that need to be filled. Japan has one of the lowest birth rates in the world. In addition to giving out money to couples to have more babies, the government has even resorted to hosting and encouraging matchmaking events, which have now become a burgeoning industry. <laughs> Chihori, a 23-year-old single woman from Tokyo, finds it difficult in this male-dominated society to initiate conversations with would-be suitors. So she finds herself here today in the hopes that there will be some sparks. So the biggest problem Japan faces is too many single people and clearly aren't having kids. What might that do to Japan if this trend continues? Kunio Kitamura heads Japan's Family Planning Association, an organization that advocates reproductive health in Japan. He's also a gynecologist and sex counselor. Uh, when I was a uh, college student, I have a first baby, mm. 
and a second baby. Mm. Uh, yeah. so now I have five children and seven grandchildren wow. I have. So <laughs> your family is very different from what's happening in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About 47.2% uh, mm -hmm. among married couples uh, have no uh, sexual intercourse over one man. Why are Japanese people not having sex? Mm. The most popular reasons in men as a uh, tired to work. Too tired for sex. Yeah, too tired. <laughs> <laughs> but being too tired can't fully explain Japan's problem. Kitamura says people have disconnected from one another and have problems communicating. And its effect is starting to show. <laughs> There's probably nothing creepier than walking through an abandoned school and seeing empty classrooms with little desks and chairs. This is among thousands of schools that have closed across Japan simply because there aren't enough kids to attend. According to Japan's health ministry, the Japanese population will shrink from 128 million to below 100 million by 2050. By then, Japan is expected to lose citizens at a rate of 900,000 per year. And in 100 years' time, the population will dip below 50 million. Japan's strict immigration policy only compounds the problem. So with fewer future workers, there are endless roles for robots in population-starved Japan. The nuclear family, typically, you know, husband, wife, two kids, and a dog. Mm -hmm. Five, ten years from now, husband, wife, one kid, one robot, one dog? Is that a yeah, possibility, right? right? Well, why not? Tomomi Ota, a 31-year-old computer programmer, was one of the early adopters of Pepper, the world's first commercially available social robot. With a cool $20,000 price tag, Pepper can double as a friend or a companion. <laughs> so what is it like to live with a robot? Tomomi initially bought Pepper as a novelty, but she quickly grew attached. For the scientist in Dr. Ishiguro's lab, this bond may be the very breakthrough that brings humans and humanoids one step closer to coexisting. Wow. So, get in, please. Thank you. Sure. Let's speak in English then. I do know a few robot jokes. Would you like to hear one? Please. What is a robot's favorite kind of music? I don't know. Heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, she's the first really fully autonomous android that we've tried to create. I created her mind. <laughs> Dylan Glass is an American engineer who has long had a fascination with robots. He came to Japan specifically because he knew the country was ready to embrace robots on an entirely new level. You know, I've created her, her perception of the world. She can also, you know, refer back to, like, oh, remember when we did that? Uh, things like that. So, how would you describe her? Is she a friend? Is she a creation? Is she a robot, your project? I guess I think of her as sort of a creation, uh -huh. but I, I think of her in a social way, so, I feel like she depends on me. Yeah. And I feel a responsibility to kind of help her out with things. When, when she does things well, I'm kind of proud of her. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously I know she's not, you know, a person, but there yeah. are certain things in your mind are triggered, and, and the fact that she's trying to learn to do social tasks and, uh -huh. and seeing her improve and, and get better at that is uh, a sort of a That's point of... fascinating. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what makes us human, right? We are a collection of our experiences. 
and memories and knowledge. Right. So the question is, do we want her to be human? Or do we want her to be better? What's your answer? I want her to be better. People are fundamentally susceptible to all these things like, like greed, like self-preservation, and all these things yeah. that you know, sometimes cause problems, right, for us. And robots, you know, we're creating something new. It doesn't have to be a person. Maybe they don't need all of those things. Maybe in some roles they could, they could be better than people. Right. And so if, if we become this race that also has robots among us who help us with things and make us better, you know, I think that's a wonderful future. <laughs> I'd love to know what you think of the future. I believe robots like me will be very important in the future. I have an unlimited capacity for patience and politeness. I can listen to people's stories, help to console them when they are sad, and encourage them to socialize with others. But I believe that social robots, like me, can help to bring the humanity back into people's lives, to bring people together, and to help make their lives more human and warm.